Hi everyone. A while back I made a video where I tested threading with the compound versus the crossfeed. There really wasn't a difference between the two. They both looked like the poopiest of poops. That brought up another question though. Will the RPM of the machine affect the surface finish? I cut both of these at 50 RPM because the thread is so coarse, but I'm going to put on the big boy pants and try them at several different speeds to see whether it makes a difference. The pucker factor is going to be very high for this, so help me out by smashing that subscribe button. I'm going to need all the encouragement I can get. I normally base the RPM for threading on how fast the threading dial moves. If my beard turns even grayer than it already is while I wait for the next number to match up, I know I'm going too slowly. If the numbers are flying by so fast that I can't reliably engage the half nuts though, I might want to consider slowing down. I'm throwing all of that out the window for this video, and I'm going to just go up sequentially through my speeds until my rectum puckers up so tightly that it collapses into a black hole. I'll be comparing these samples to my original 1 inch 8 thread from the first video, so I'll stick with the same thread and the same material, which is Alloy 360 Brass. Also, a lot of people asked why I didn't just turn the tool upside down and thread in reverse. I would totally do that, except the reverse does not work on my lathe. I have a problem with the reverse contactor, and all it does is buzz when I try to engage it. If you happen to have an idea on how to fix that, or a good lead on where to look for a replacement that will sell to individuals and not just businesses, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. First up is 75 RPM. The threading dial is manageable, as is my reaction time to disengage the half nuts at the end of the cut. This is a real-time shot of the pass, so you can see exactly what I'm dealing with. I'll do that for all of the speeds, so you too can experience the growing anxiety I'm feeling with all of this. I'm not noticing much of a difference in the surface finish between this one and the 50 RPM sample, but we'll compare all of them together at the end. By the way, I'm threading using the crossfeed for all of these samples because I'm cutting a lot of identical parts. That just simplifies everything. I'm also going to be using cutting oil for all of them. Next up is 100 RPM. This is more of the same. Engaging and disengaging the half nuts is no big deal, and the rate that the tool is careening towards the headstock hasn't reached frightening levels yet. The cut does sound smoother, although it's not really showing in the surface finish yet. Moving on to 120 RPM, and boy, what a difference 20 RPM makes. The feed rate of the tool is starting to get a little uncomfortable, and I had a few false starts when engaging the half nuts, but otherwise, it was still pretty doable. This would actually be a relatively comfortable speed for a finer thread, possibly even a little bit too slow, and I feel that's an important point to make. The only thing that makes this speed uncomfortable is the fact that the thread is 8 threads per inch. That means with each revolution of the chuck, the carriage is feeding towards the headstock by an eighth of an inch, or about 3 millimeters. At 24 TPI, or roughly 1 millimeter pitch, this RPM might feel uncomfortably slow. That's why I base my RPM on the speed of the threading dial. 165 RPM is definitely starting to get fast, but as hair raising as it is at first, you actually get used to it pretty quickly. I just make sure that I give myself more of a lead before the part so I have room to stop in case of a false start, of which there were many. At this speed, it was much more difficult to engage the half nuts accurately. If my lathe would reverse, this would be a good time to just leave the half nuts engaged and then run the lathe backwards to return it to the beginning of the thread. The good news is, the surface finish is starting to improve, especially on the back side of the thread, which is as smooth as a baby's bottom. The leading flank of the thread still has some chatter marks, but they're much better than before. Let's move on and see how far we can go. 220 RPM is my last speed in back gear, and at this speed, the tool travels from start to finish in just under 4.5 seconds. That's pretty quick, but I still have some intestinal fortitude to spare. Maybe I learned my lesson from the 165 RPM thread, but I didn't have a single false start on this one. I will say that the sound was horrendous on the early roughing passes. <laughs> 
That's to be expected because those are the heaviest cuts. The finish is definitely looking better. You can still see slight facets, but it's considerably better than the slower speeds. I put a much wider thread relief on the rest of the samples to give myself plenty of room to stop, and I gave myself an even bigger lead. 300 RPM is my first open belt speed, and before I started cutting the thread, I brought my tool well away from the part and cut air for a bit. I'm glad I did because the threading dial was really zooming along and it was very, very difficult to engage the half nuts at the correct spot. I really had to slam the half nuts into engagement instead of what I normally do, which is to start closing them a little early and feel them drop in. I just didn't have room for that because the dial was whizzing by so quickly. I gave myself more than an inch of lead before I reached the part because the tool will close that distance incredibly quickly, about 1.6 seconds. It was genuinely frightening. That said, my sphincter is still only in neutron star territory right now, so we're going to continue for one more sample. The finish is looking really good by the way. I am stopping at 410 RPM. A singularity has definitely formed inside my colon, which is good because I certainly would have soiled my pants otherwise, and my brown pants are in the wash. That was truly terrifying. I also cut air for a bit before this thread, and I gave myself a huge lead, a longer threaded section, and an even wider thread relief. I took full advantage of that thread relief as well by just disengaging the half nuts once I reached it. I'm normally in the habit of pulling out with the crossfeed and then disengaging the half nuts, even when I have a thread relief, but I wanted to make this thread as simple as I could, so I took a variable out of the equation. The length from start to finish was about 3 inches or 75 millimeters, and it covered that distance in about 3.5 seconds. I took my time between passes to get my mind right before engaging the half nuts. Even with the extra time, I still cut this thread to completion in less than 5 minutes. At 75 RPM, it took closer to 15 minutes, although, to be fair, I measured that one more often. Let's compare the finishes. I want to acknowledge first that while I'm talking about the RPM settings on my machine, what I'm really changing every time I change the RPM is the amount of material moving past the cutter. That's normally expressed as surface feet per minute, SFM, or meters per minute. I'm going to put the SFM and meters per minute numbers up on the screen as I talk about the finish on each part. For reference, I would normally be cutting brass at 150 SFM or 45.72 meters per minute with a high speed steel tool. There are a lot of chatter marks in my original 50 RPM sample from the first video and there really is not much of a difference in the 75 and 100 RPM samples. Things start to clear up a bit at 120 RPM, and you can really see a difference at 165 and 220. The finishes at 300 and 400 are really quite nice, although I'm not sure the stress of cutting at that speed is worth it. I didn't mind doing it once for science, but I certainly wouldn't want to do that all day every day. Overall, my theory that the chatter marks were caused by the slow speed seems to hold water, which is good. I'd hate to look like an idiot on the internet. So what should I test out next? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Show those like and subscribe buttons some love while you're down there and consider supporting the channel over on Patreon like these Paragons of Humanity. Want to see more? The video that caused me all this suffering is in the top left. In the bottom left, there's a video YouTube thinks you'll like, and on the right is my playlist of all my other machining test videos. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.